I want to welcome you and uh, what we will do is go through the agenda of the presentation for um, architectural workshop and um, save all the questions and comments and whatnot till the end of the taping session so that if uh, we don't um, get distracted as we're taping this uh, session. Um, for If there's anyone there who does not know me, my name is Mark Bowers. I'm with Architectural Workshop. We are the architect that's been selected to uh, design and coordinate the new Performing Arts Center and uh, Civic Center located downtown. Uh, this is my assistant Kelsey Mullen. He is a resident of Fairfield and he will be our local liaison and um, we have uh, set up Kelsey an office here in town out of his home and he's connected to our office in Denver through every form of technology currently available to man. <laughs> <laughs> so email, fax, and whatnot. And um, so that will also be available for anyone else who needs to email us, fax us, copy us, or do anything of that nature. So um, at this point, for those who are present, uh, this is an agenda of what we will be going over tonight. So you can follow along. And uh, we have extra copies in case anybody needs a copy for later. Yeah, well. <clears throat> um, I just want to touch quickly that um, Architectural Workshop is going to be working with the board to go through a schematic design process very similar to what we did last summer in coming up with a conceptual design for the Performing Arts Center at the Bovard property which is located east of downtown Fairfield about two miles. Um, there has been a piece of property acquired downtown Fairfield that um, is going to become the new site for the facility. Uh, with that change in site come a lot of different constraints on the facility and also a lot of opportunities that we don't want to overlook. So because of that we are going to go through the process again. We are going to maintain the same program that we developed last summer from our series of interviews with the different performing art, dance, drama groups that are located in Fairfield that will be using their facility. So the program will remain the same. Also the budget will remain the same. Um, that's at approximately 5.5 .5 million dollars. Um, once we get a little further into the process we will begin to define exactly where that money goes but at this point that should be all inclusive for the whole project. Um, the uh, schematic design process has been broken down in not only the um, timeline for this particular portion but also in the um, proposal that was submitted um, as a revised proposal that I believe the board mm -hmm. um, voted and approved and so that's all outlined in there. If you have any questions, you can either Which call myself or Which reminds me, I think Kelsey. I am supposed to give you this letter of intent. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Maybe this is the appropriate time to give it to you. Okay, fantastic. And this is a letter of intent for option number one, which uh, was an agreement that we would have an initial payment of $4,000 down and then uh, payment from our invoices are due 30 days after they're received. That way it gives a little more comfort zone for the board to um, work with fundraising and seed money. So we made that available. Thank you. Um, Kelsey and I have uh, prepared a project notebook. This project notebook is for the board and will be left with you. What this entails um, is the design of the Civic Center from last summer at the Bovard property. This was everything that we did last summer and all the documentation. Um, at the beginning is all of our directories for consultants and people who are on the board. 
Um, I'd like for everybody to double check your addresses, phone numbers, and if you can include emails, that'll be great because then uh, correspondence between consultants and the board can uh, be copied to everybody since that's a very easy convenience and available to everyone. Do you want us to mark up on this one mm -hmm. right here? Yes, okay. and then you can give it to Kelsey next okay. time. We'll update it, put the correct one in, and then I can also email out the directories to everybody so you just have it on your computer. Okay. Um, we have also in the front the uh, revised schematic proposal and then the initial proposal that was given last January 31st that um, everybody voted on. Uh, also in here we have the documentation from last summer for the scheme that was chosen along with the program that we will be using and the budget, the basis of the budget, which we will be continuing to use for this. Do we phase. have a lot of this already? Yes. Okay. You should in some sort have all of it. Um, also in here we did other options, three options for the Bovard property. We did additional options including Overland Sheepskin Company and the Armory. And then in the back we have a copy of all the meeting minutes from all the interviews. So this is something that for people, if they don't have it or need to reference it or are new to the board, will be available for you. So. <clears throat> um, now, are you saying you're going to do the programming completely over with? No. No. The no, programming remains how we left it from last summer. We've already done it. The people who are right. going to use the building are the same people, so right. we'll use the Correct. same program. We just, we have to Redesign design a building for this site. site. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, um, I wanted to touch base real quickly on uh, confirming the upcoming meetings and to make sure that it would be convenient for people to attend. And um, that's outlined on the schematic timeline. The remaining three meetings will be August 23rd, September 13th, and October 4th. Um, can these be changed if need be? Yes, they can be, but it, I need for that to happen in the next week so I can book all my airfare okay. and get it at the best price. Is it going to throw everything out of whack, um, timeline, or can you readjust you're coming right. in the timeline. We will do the best we can to adjust everything. Um, October 4th is on um, this timeline, the end of schematic design. If there are places where we need approvals and aren't able to get them because things have been adjusted, then that would affect the final date for the timeline. <laughs> do you want to sit here? Ken, you okay. can just come yeah, around here to the other side. We're just taping this for our... Yeah. We're trying to pretend the main that not camera's here. not here. No, we're glad to see you. Yeah. Just sorry, so. boy, I just got my aesthetic. <clears throat> Is that just off? Is Gary choosing? I just talked to you. Okay, yeah. we'll put that in the back room. Yeah. So we just kind of got started. Yeah. Right, we're actually um, on item number two, Ken. Mm -hmm. Um, under deliverables, the deliverables are listed also in the timeline. So you'll see that at each meeting. I just want to point one thing out that um, the week prior to the meeting when I fly out, we will send out a packet to all of the board members so that you'll be able to see the upcoming agenda. You'll see things that we'll be discussing and issues that are critical that we'll need to talk about or get decisions on. That way you have a little forewarning. You don't just show up and get something thrown at you without being able to talk about it or review it. So that's what the um, packets are prior to each meeting that um, I'm going to be attending. Okay, the contract. Um, you signed a letter of intent which is all that we need to get going and we have all of our consultants um, working at Schematic Design and uh, we are now flowing on our timeline. The contract is a um, standard form AIA contract between owner and architect. 
Um, there's really nothing hidden in here, but you may want to have somebody more qualified than I go through it and let you know um, what issues are outstanding and that type Sarah, of thing. Sarah, well, she's a lawyer for us. Right. right. She's great to have on the board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Save your attorney fees. Um, we did include an addendum that uh, for scope of services, it references the proposal. So not only are we um, obligated to do what the contract says, we're also obligated to perform what we say in our proposal. Um, under total liability, we have a um, portion there that you'll need Sarah to look at also as far as our liability in the project. And then um, if there is any dispute resolution that needs to be taken care of, uh, we proposed going to an arbitration with three people. And so um, Sarah can bring you up to speed on that also, but we've found that that, well, actually, personally, we haven't found, but uh, we've heard that that's probably the, the easiest way to go about uh, resolving that. So I will leave that with you. Uh, you will need to fill in your legal name and the legal name of the project, however you want that to be. Um, we talked about payments as per option number one for our letter of intent. Um, and I think that's all uh, we have with the contractual side of everything. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kelsey. Kelsey's going to go through some of the aspects of owner responsibility. So these are the issues that you as the board uh, will be responsible for providing us with and coordinating on your end. So, Kelsey? Sure. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay sitting. Um, one of the things that is uh, uh, a little bit uh, unique to this project is um, the relationship that the owners have with the um, engineers, with French Reniker. It's, uh, it's changed a little bit because of the last meeting that I was, that I was at here, um, we were talking about uh, uh, bringing some of their services from the design phase, the design development phase, back into the schematic package, schematic phase. And so what we decided to do was propose a contract between French Reniker and the board, um, as opposed to what is typical which is a contract between French Reniker and the architects. And so that way you pay them and instead of you paying us who then, then pays them. And so that's what makes it uh, uh, unique to this project. But it's, it's essentially the same, um, but I just wanted to clarify that. And so. So there were two aspects that we took out of the previous schematic design because we were trying to minimize the payment for the board. Mm -hmm. um, one was a full site survey where they go out and stake the site. They survey all the utilities, the contours, they locate all of the utilities. Um, that's about $4,500. And now I'm going to confirm all of this with Jerry Long tomorrow. I have a meeting with him. Um, so the one aspect is going to be a site survey. The second aspect is a soils report. So they'll need to go out, take some preliminary um, borings into the soil, pull it out, and then write a report on what the bearing capacity of the soil is, which will give us what type of foundations we need to design for the building. Um, that, I'm not quite sure what the price is. He broke it out in a couple phases. They usually do a preliminary because we don't know exactly where the building's going to go. So they'll do a couple just test holes and draw up a preliminary report. Once we have a building design and prior to construction, they will go out and take more soil borings at exact locations where footings will be going so that if we are going to find any surprises, hopefully we'll find them when they do the soil borings and we can account for them. Mm -hmm. So, Now, I believe Sally has visited with Jerry mm -hmm. and okay. um, he intends to come to our next meeting, okay. regular meeting. And okay. 
and go over things. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is a third part which uh, we are still going to retain French Reniker as our civil engineer to give us civil consulting services through schematic design. And that is in our fee, the $45,000 that we've proposed. And so they are going to be a part of our team in designing the project outside of just doing the testing and surveying. So. Right. In the pr the proposed or the uh, revised proposal that you're talking Correct. about, right? Correct. And so, um, I guess that clarifies that. Um, the uh, another issue is um, that the the owner, the board as a group, um, it's for efficiency purposes, um, and we'll get into this a little bit later with questions and answers. Is um, it's, it's important that we end up getting uh, an over owner, rep owner representative um, so that, let's say, because there actually are some questions from some of our um, consultants and uh, we'll pass those out later. And so instead of those being dispersed, it, we, we would like to have like one person to right. refer to so that we could call and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's actually, it, it's really good for efficiency. And so you know, we'd like to establish a one person, an owner representative, um, so that we can, you know, always have a contact person. And that's not a board member, correct? Uh, no, that would be a board, a board member. member. It could be, member. yeah. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have one point of contact. If we need a decision or an answer or a direction, it's somebody who, they have the hotline, they can get a hold of the three other people who would be important, and they have the authority to uh, make decisions, whether it's a paint color or if it's, right. you know, a, a change in meeting plans or something of that nature. And that's des that's during the design <coughs> phase. Now I know what you're talking about. You're referring okay. to the construction phase, right. where it would be it would be smart to hire somebody okay. that has done it, that knows. And we talked Correct. about this a little bit more okay. before. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. right. Do I think Sally would be that person? Unless she doesn't want to, for yeah. some reason. Right. <laughs> and that's what you just need to discuss amongst yourselves. Yeah, but we need so she, a... She has served in that capacity to date. Mm -hmm. And... Um, she but, the logical one. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And that would be fantastic. But what we need is just that you as a board have one person that we... Um, if we have questions or anything like that, we go to that one person and they funnel it. And in lieu of us trying to track down everyone who's on the board, so. You do okay. have all of our email addresses and phone numbers and all that stuff, don't you? Yes. And uh, do it's, you want to confirm, check what you're it's in a notebook. Mm -hmm. There's a um, directory, and I've asked that um, everybody double check that just to make sure everything's current, because this was from last January. Yeah, the file's changed. <laughs> and email certainly makes things a lot easier. It yes, it really does. 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 And I know I have your email, Ken. I've been getting your emails. So, um, <clears throat> in um, last week, Architectural Workshop had a consultant kickoff meeting in Denver to um, get all the consultants together, and from that meeting. Our theater designer, uh, Dana from Akoda, was questioning whether you had somebody in mind as a technical director yet or not. This would be possibly somebody who you would retain as part of the staff for the Performing Arts Center. After it opens? Yes. And I know this is. Uh, kind of thinking ahead, but similar to kitchen design and the <laughs> wants <a> <laughs> of a chef and a cook, a theater has many different aspects of how it functions mechanically, that if we can get somebody who can give us that direction technically, that will assist in probably getting a product in the end that's going to suit you. We might have several more. that want to have their hands in the soup. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and so you as a board just kind of need to talk about that because there are going to need to be decisions about how the theater operates technically that you will need to make. 
and um, those are the type of decisions that if you do bring a technical director on someday they will want it to function how they want it to function so that's something you need to talk about also and see if there may be somebody on your board who you can give that authority to make those type of decisions or if there's somebody else you want to consult or if you want our consultant to make the decisions but what she has said is she's not comfortable making those because it it really is somewhat of a personal thing sure. so I wanted to put that out also as a as something for you as the owner to think about and, and talk about I'm amongst sure yourself. people on the board that are real active in theater right Right. That might be a tough one. I mean, we've got Scott and we've got Andrew. Mm -hmm. I would say they would be the mm -hmm. top two for right. theater. So, but that's something that um, our um, Dana has also requested to come out on our third meeting, which is uh, September 13th. And present to you the board um, and talk with you and get your feedback how you want the theater to function. Uh, the theater is probably the most expensive and complex component of the entire Civic Center and it's essential that we, we allocate our money where it needs to go mm -hmm. and not just make decisions to be making decisions because theaters are very expensive and we don't want to be putting money somewhere where we're not going to be using it. And so I think uh, she has a number of years of experience, very familiar with not only old theaters but new theaters, theaters in Europe, a lot of different type of theaters. Um, she's probably the head in Denver as far as theater design. So she would come with you on mm -hmm. that. I would say that's definitely a date we would want to make sure that Andrew mm -hmm. and that Scott Slapton could be there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. So that date So I'll change. propose that and we'll try and see um, if we can coordinate that because you know the theater is the jewel of the the project mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that every dollar we put into it it's going to function as how we want it to. So um, let's look at that. Um, at this point, I'll see if there's any questions. Uh, my only question is, should we coordinate our normal um, board meeting days with their meetings? I think Maybe that's we why have there's attendance. <coughs> we have bad attendance. Um, typically, we're what, the first Tuesday and the third Thursday? So I'm wondering if we should, have you already bought any airplane tickets yet? Nope. Okay. I haven't, and I won't for a week. Right. I'm probably so going to be can... gone that 13th day, but I'm Well, that's not, see, that's the thing. That's, um, what is that? Uh, is that a Tuesday or a Thursday? And the 13th is a Thursday, but it's the second Thursday. So it's getting off. Yeah. So do we want to make that September 20th? What do you guys think? I'm going to be going in too. Um, but can you oh, back it up to the 11th? Are you going to be oh, meeting on the or 11th? Or should we do, yeah, the second, actually, the, we do the first Tuesday. Oh, Would okay. be September 4th. Which is probably too close to Labor Day. Labor Day. But we could change it to be do the September 11th. Should we do that? Sounds good now. What, yeah, why don't you... Instead of having it on this, our board meeting on the 4th, can we change it like that? Or do we have to go through a whole... Why don't we do email and check with members and see what they okay. think? Okay. For September okay. 11th? Yeah, September and that's 11th. And Tuesday? Okay. So, yeah, Tuesday. I'll and then uh, email I, when I get home and put that out there. And then the third Thursday, okay, you won't be here. Um, then October 4th. Let's see. That is second. Mm. Okay, so that's, yeah, the first Thursday, if we did the second, the, what, was the, what did I say, the first Tuesday would be October 2nd. Should we change that to October 2nd? Mm. Yeah, we could do that. Now, typically our meetings are at 5.30 on Tuesdays. That's fine. That's yeah, the, 
I was going to say the only thing is Gary usually has a lot for us to do too or talk about, but the alternate meeting could handle that, and plus he will want to hear what you say. What we're doing. Also, so that's, those are both Tuesdays? Correct. Um, September 11th, was that a Tuesday? And October 2nd? Yeah, yeah October um, 2nd. Which probably would be better for Gary because he heads home on Thursdays. So right. And that way if he had to stay late, that would be better for him anyway. Right. Correct. Okay. So Do we also, on meeting number two, want to propose August 21st, which would be a Tuesday? Um, no, I think we already or is have that one a okay? meeting. Oh no, what, for some reason, our meeting is 16th, August 16th. 16th. That's not, um, let's this see. Isn't right, is it? Oh yeah, it is. The 2nd, 9th, and the 16th is the 3rd. Ken, I didn't know your meeting on Tuesdays. And so. Well, we did. It's always been on Thursdays. It's just started right, right. Started we started added. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> our next meeting is Our next meeting is the 16th. Yeah. Is that too soon? That's real soon. That's really yeah, soon. Yeah, okay. that would be too So soon. should we keep theirs on the 23rd? Which is a Thursday. Uh-huh. We've got to have one meeting. I mean, we're going to get to the place where we're going to have more meetings, meetings anyway. Right. Let's one on top of the other. that one. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Okay, so it's August 23rd, September 11th, October 2nd. Okay. And we'll email everybody to make sure that that's okay. And I won't book any travel arrangements until I hear from... Would you like me to call Scott Slepta and get a feel since you have to do this right away? I don't know when Sally comes back. Let's not do it now. Why don't we finish going through this? No, I then, don't mean now, but okay. I mean... Right. Yeah, why don't you... Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And see if the 11th will work. Yeah. And with Ann. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Corley. Mm -hmm. No. Um, I just wanted to review our consultant team. Um, when we selected our consultant team in January, we went with a electrical mechanical firm, um, HSG Incorporated. There was a split in the partnership, and what we did is we went with the actual um, engineers who had the experience and that I had the relationship and history with. And so the electrical engineer went to MKK Consulting Engineers. And then mechanically, we went with Carver Engineering, which one of the mechanical engineers went to Carver. Uh, what we did in looking at mechanical engineering, since that's so critical, at that point we, we re-interviewed three firms, uh, the Bollard Group, uh, we interviewed MKK, and we interviewed Carver Engineering. Uh, we felt that Carver Engineering was the most qualified for the project, and in addition we had the relationship with them and knew that they had theater experience. Where, where are all these people from? Pardon? Where are all these people from? Um, they are all located in Denver except for French Rineker, who will be our civil and soils. They're here in Fairfield. And then um, Global Construction is here in Fairfield. And Kelsey, were you at the meetings with everybody? Uh, these consultant meetings? Mm -hmm. No, they take place in Denver. Okay, and so, so you I just, didn't go for that? I didn't go for those meetings. I just, re I just review the, uh, the meeting minutes. Okay. And which firm is Dana with the acoustical or the sound lighting? She's with Acoustical and Theater Design. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's her last name? Uh, I always get this messed up. Let me look it up. Always on a first name basis, huh? Yes. Because <laughs> I always pronounce it incorrectly. It's Hoagland, I believe. Oh, it's probably right in here. It's huh? probably in here. Right. Yeah, okay. Dana Hoagland, because I tend to say Hoagland, which is incorrect. Yeah. <clears throat> so. so these people would all fly out here? 
Or, well, they don't um, need to, actually. No. The two people that will fly out will be uh, Dana Hoagland with Akoda, and she will be talking about the actual theater design. And her, uh, her part in acoustics are designing is designing the space mm -hmm. and designing any variable acoustical panels. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Geiler, who's a principal at Gwynfed, he actually deals with the equipment that we will be putting into the space. So the microphones, the uh, sound equipment, amplification, and he'll be dealing with the actual lighting equipment also. Mm -hmm come here at any time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that he too. is actually wanting to come in schematic design because he runs the equipment for determining um, noise levels uh -huh. and he's concerned about the railroad tracks. So he wants to come out so and... He definitely should come here. I yeah. Think. And he's going to take readings from the railroad tracks so that we can determine um, not only just noise but also vibration and uh, account for those aspects in the theater. Do you have a tentative time that he's going to come? He would come at the same time when Dana comes so that they could, they've been working together for five or six years and so they are, it's kind of, if you go with Dana you get Jeff, if you go with Jeff you get Dana. They're, they're pretty much a team okay. and work really well together so that's why we went with them. Now this makes, these, <clears throat> these two coming into town makes me think about the public meetings that we were talking about holding mm -hmm. for the public to come and, you know, to, so that we can sort of present our, ourselves to the public and our ideas to the public and, you know, lend an ear to and the show public. show that we are, we that, have consultants. Yeah, that we're here, areas. that we're available, that we're qualified, and things like this, and so maybe this could coordinate with that meeting. Well, um, it couldn't if it was on the 11th, because, oh yeah, yeah, we're going public. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's right. Okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> so far, that's our plan. We're public. <laughs> um, so that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can double check with them, but I believe they would be very willing to do that and open the door. So. And Jeff's last name is Geiler. G U Y L E R. Okay. All right. From our meeting with the consultants last week, um, each of the consultants put together kind of a list of questions and information that they will need through the schematic design process. And um, what this will do will help them more accurately uh, prepare their schematic design. So for instance, with Jeff, if you want to 48 channel lighting board or a 96 or a 256 channel lighting board that will be written into his specifications so that when we do the pricing at the end it'll be accurate and so you'll find um, a couple pages from each consultant that outlines some very specific questions and there are some very general questions as to how often is the theater used, who's using it, that type of thing a lot of these things we have addressed previously, but I went ahead and instructed them to ask it again just so we can think about it and confirm that and say, yes, we are using the theater this way this many times. Okay, so these questions are here and will need to be addressed over the next three weeks by uh, you as the board. And I do have extra copies of that. <clears throat> At this point, we're going to move into just kind of a project update and some conceptual ideas that the consultant team and the architectural team have been going through. And at this point, um, Kelsey has been our local contact and uh, he'll go through all of the people and processes that he has uh, outlined here in Fairfield. Kelsey? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> you can see behind us, uh, I've, I've spent uh, a little time documenting the site and obtaining information. Um, these really wonderful aerial photographs, I don't know if you can, you can see that very well, I'm sure you can. You can obviously see where the site is there in green. 
um, I obtained these down at the uh, courthouse. And if nobody knows about, if people, if anyone doesn't know about the refer the the <laughs> files that they have in there, they're really terrific. They have these huge books that are leather bound like this, and they're it's really amazing room to walk into. It's a big vault, and uh, they'll make copies for you. And so, um, in in order for me to make this model, we'll look at later. I uh, I went and took photographs and got as much information as I could from. Uh, all sources, and this was one of them. Um, and then, of course, I, I photo documented the site um, and the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, this is one of the ways that we end up being influenced design wise is to respond to the uh, fabric of the neighborhood. And um, this, this model we'll get into in a minute, more of a massing model than anything, but um, was, was produced from these these photographs and these uh, um, uh, aerial uh, uh, photocopies. Um, but I also uh, did a little research on the history of the site and found some interesting things out um, about it. Um, it was, uh, I won't get into the history of it, but I've, I talked to Mark Schaefer, everybody knows Mark, and, um, and uh, I forgot his name, Gene Ludke at the uh, Ledger. And he's, uh, you know, apparently this is his history, is his passion, and so he's uh, supplied me with some information about the uh, site that I, I didn't know um, about the hotel that was there and that there was an opera house where the Ledger building is now. We're still working on getting a photograph of that, but uh, I'm sure they're out there in a postcard or something like that. Um, he would be postcard. a too. Yeah, he would. His postcard collection. Mm -hmm. I saw some down at City Hall um, that were Jimmy Nelson. Right, right, and uh, and uh, Gene said that he has almost all of those, and so. Why don't you just come over on our side? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, I I was speaking with uh, Dan Gifford down at City Hall and found out what it uh, what it takes to get something built in Fairfield and getting uh, building permits and such and. Uh, he uh, told me the basics, the ins and outs, the code, and uh, and who to talk to in Des Moines to get the um, uh, to get it reviewed for fire purposes, and and uh, and enlightened me on the uh, time frame for getting a building permit, which I'm sure we can fit right into the design development phase. And um, that's about it. And Correct me if I'm wrong. The um the state of Iowa will be adopting the International Building Code very shortly. It's a 2000 code that's coming out um, in lieu of the current Uniform Building Code 97. Uh, they've given us the opportunity of using either. And so, as the architect, we're going to do a code analysis using both systems and see which one will, <coughs> excuse me, afford us the most opportunity to do what we want to do yet still meet the criteria for life safety because a lot of times if you get into one of the life safety systems you'll be obligated to um, provide a number of systems of safety that can cost a lot of money where if you use a different system you can provide the same um, level of safety without going to the expense. So that's our going to be our game to play with them and see which will be the most cost effective for the type of building we're going to have and how we want to use it. So basically the the international <coughs> building code is a combination of a few different codes that are floating around out there. Am I correct? Right. Correct. Um, one being the the uniform building code and another one was I think Boca, the Southern Code or something like this. And um, you know, when I was talking to uh, Dan, he said that just if we were to design with with either of those, both of which we have, right. that it would be it would be uh, acceptable. acceptable, absolutely. Also, we um, picked up a zoning map for this area, and interesting enough, as it is, half of our property is actually zoned residential, and the other half is zoned business. And it's interesting because the half that is zoned residential is with the courthouse, which is zoned residential. So we asked who lived in the courthouse, and they didn't know. <laughs> but um, 
what we will need to do is go through a rezoning process for our lot and they said that that would not be an issue they were familiar with the project and that um, it's just going to extend the uh, it'll be about a four week process what we would do is uh, toward the end of construction documents we would begin that process so that we wouldn't have to be waiting before we could actually build the facility for code issues. Um, code official indicated that that wouldn't be a problem. So uh, just so you know about that aspect he, of He it. did allude to having known and so, sort of planned on this issue <coughs> coming up. And he said, he said that they were planning on zoning that for business anyway. Oh, and that it would be, that. yeah. And so it was uh, something that was sort of in the back of everyone's minds and is probably now in the works. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, that's not an issue. How come you guys didn't do this? Oh, oh wait. You just ran out of time. No, 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 I forgot. I still I have it's, it here. Right. The model that you see is something that we feel is very important. Not only that's does it give us context as to our project and an ability to kind of pull back and see how things relate, it gives us a context to the site as a whole and to the community community that we're going to be building within. So this model will be developing through this next two month period till we get to the end where the remainder of the city will be modeled. Uh, we could potentially have some you know, tree-lined boulevards and things of that nature. Um, and then also our model will probably be the, mo the most detailed of all, leaving everything else as a background and having our proposed building being the feature of this so that you can photograph it or use it for whatever type of publications we need. But um, are these blocks really that... Of, um, smaller than they are correct. I, I didn't think they were at first, but mm -hmm. you know, yes. if you'll you'll see them here. But here's our site, <coughs> oh, okay. and then these are between Grimes and Hempstead. These really are but half blocks. Because mm -hmm. if we did parking over by the old depot over, would be mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. That would be convenient because yeah. mm -hmm. there's lots of space there. Anything? Or if they fixed up the lot a little bit, but is this supposed to be the water tower? No. No, oh, this okay. is the so town park. square. Town this is square. Central Park. Oh, this is the town square. Okay, yeah. I'm so confused. Okay, that's right. Okay. So this, this is, right. you know where we are now, right? Right, right, right. So. I was thinking this was um, First National Bank over here. Mm -hmm. I was oh. thrown off for a moment. And the that's parking over here. that you surveyed in this area, where does that extend? What part Do you did have you those survey? Numbers? I have the numbers here. Um, basically a one block radius, and that includes the blocks that are just it, that includes all four sides of the of the surrounding blocks mm -hmm. um, gives us and I'll double check this um, there I have a diagram of where all the parking spaces are um, and I don't remember exactly what street parking there is on that side but in a one block radius the um, I'm sorry? I think you've got a lot of parking there. There's quite a bit. Like there really is. It, it, I was surprised when I found out that there were 470 parking spaces in a one block radius, 375 of them being public, not office or basically street parking or in uh, um, a uh, municipal parking lot. Not the church parking lot. Not the church parking lot. Wow. That would, if we included the church parking lot and offices, we would get up to 470, but not including that, that's 374, uh, 374 spots, and that does not include what's on our site. Um, if you go into a two block radius, and so including these, these blocks we see on the southern side, but one, one more set of blocks out from this model, um, there are over 600 public parking spaces. So that's, that, that's on the street and in the municipal lots and not including what's on our on our site. So there's a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. um, it, all, it just depends on if we want to rely on those or not. Mm -hmm. Something we need to talk about. And what's the code say that we have to have? Just over right. 300. Just over 300? Okay. And that's based on 500 seat auditorium? Correct. Plus uh, 
the offices plus the exhibition space. And so that's the minimum required um, that we need to provide. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's actually outlined in the program from what we did last summer. Okay. That's how we derived from that number. It would be interesting to know how many parking spaces are at the high school. I mean, it mm -hmm. seems to kind of be able to handle it handle that crowd for that big of auditorium mm -hmm. it does right. they, they people flow onto the street there but that's right. that's typical um but just to give you an idea um of the, the size of the lot and how many cars will fit on it um the municipal lot on our block here holds 86 cars and that's two th that's you know three quarters of of one side of our block mm -hmm. and so you know, just in a just in a parking lot, the lots actually end up getting pretty big. But when you spread them out into the neighborhood, they add up pretty quick. Parking is a issue that um, I think we'll probably outline a little more closely at our next meeting when we all come together and show a couple different uh, schemes and options. Um, to kind of uh, finish up our meeting tonight. We did put together three options that are kind of a progression in a design charrette that Kelsey and I and the other design consultants um, had last week to just kind of talk about massing, circulation, um, parking, pedestrian orientation, building orientation, things of that nature. And what I'll do is I'll present those in just a minute, but these are just ideas right now that we're kicking around. It's nothing that we have to decide or talk about. Uh, from this, we'll probably go into one or two schemes that when we come back, we'll present those and um, go further from that point. And so with that, our first idea was staying close to the same type of uh, building we had before where it was a single building and what that did is it occupied primarily the entire property we um, are not going to touch the house that's on the southwest corner uh, what we did is we put parking on the northwest uh, we emulated the access areas and uh, what we did is created an alley behind the facility to provide um, services and access. Um, we put the exhibition space along the southern portion of the property. Um, what that did is relate to the tribium. We put the theater in the center, pulled it back because it's a taller mass, let that relate to the courthouse. And then on the northern portion of the property, we articulated um, the support spaces, um, the offices, the workshops, things of that nature to try and relate a little more to what's on the north side of town, which more of a residential feel. Um, here you can see we built a real simple massing model just to get a feel of that. I think um, after looking at this as a, as a design team, we felt it was just really big. It, it wasn't very sensitive. It did not cater very well to um, uh, pedestrian. It didn't cater very well to services and accessing of the facility. When you have a theater and you have traveling groups, you need to be able to have semis parked and you need to be able to have people coming and going. Uh, this type of configuration, a single building, some of the advantages, you could share some of your toilets and things of that nature, but some of the disadvantages are when uh, the exhibition space is being utilized, then people will be able to access the theater. You're going to have to have climate controls throughout the building operating, and we think that um, cost-wise, a lot of your money is located in the theater. If it's one single building, the cost of your building as a whole will increase. It just, it has a way of doing that. Materials, systems, everything gravitates, so the total cost of your building increases. 
Uh, last summer we were trying to create almost three separate aspects associated with the facility so that uh, the theater cost about 200, uh, the exhibition space cost about 110, and your offices and support space were about $140 a square foot. And in order to really stay true to that, we feel we might need to, to um, provide a little clearer separation. Um, wait, 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 what's this thing right here? Um, the red denotes more of your pedestrian traffic, where people are going to be walking, where they're going to be coming from. The blue denotes your massing of your buildings. We try to denote with the yellow where people will circulate within the spaces, the building, and on the site. But where's the lobby for this? The lobby would be out front. These are basically one step up from a bubble diagram saying okay. this is where your theater goes okay. and there's yes. no more design okay. other than we know that our current theater would fit within that approximate square footage. Is there any Stabacha Bay in this placement at all? Yes. Okay. We are keeping that in the back of your mind. Oh, throughout everything that we do, because we, we haven't forgotten. That's an important part of making this building and facility function for the community as a whole. So we're looking at uh, eastern direction. Um, but as far as placing the offices to the north, as opposed to the. Uh, Ex convention exhibition to the south. Does that make a difference, or can no, you flip flop? No, we that? could. We could definitely flip flop okay. that. It's right. it's where you put. Spe it's it's specific, but you can move different okay. different things around, especially in a complex like this. Okay. Okay. I think that's interesting. Oh, it gets more interesting, Curly. <laughs> that's half the fun of where we are. It's, you don't have to commit to anything. You can just look at different options to try and get a feel for what's going to function the best not only for the facility but we see this as an opportunity that we can help to revitalize the whole downtown area of Fairfield and we know that this building how it's laid out how it relates to the buildings around um, how it handles parking how it controls pedestrian flow is all going to have an influence on the revitalization of downtown. And that's very important to us. So are you saying the first thing you showed us was not your favorite? You didn't, you eliminated that? We haven't eliminated anything. The three that I'm showing, we came up with about nine different schemes when we were playing and they were more bubble diagrams and circulation and where do we want people to go? What experience do we want a pedestrian to have? What direction and flow do we want cars to have? Are we crossing cars in front of pedestrians and then having semis trying to access in front of them? And so we're trying to work this out and um, um, so this is probably the three different progressions of where we've gone through the massing and placement of things so far. Okay. So more for you so that you see where we're going and what we're thinking and so that you can also have feedback on this also because um, this is your facility and this is what you'll be using. Um, as we've said before, kind of the jewel of this project is going to be the theater. Um, so with this particular scheme, we began to move the theater a little closer to the downtown area so that more of that is felt towards the downtown area. The um, open space relates a little more to the courthouse uh, we went with a similar parking and access from the back side. What we did do is provide a access corridor so that you could have more of an urban pedestrian corridor that could be utilized for loading and unloading from trucks and so that 
during times when you aren't having shows and things like that, trucks can go in there and not run over people. Um, providing an outdoor area for an art walk or things of that nature. Having our primary entrances here. And um, taking the exhibition and turning it so that you have a little better access into the exhibition space for loading and unloading. So it's it's less expensive to have three separate freestanding buildings? That'll have to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, talking with some of the consultants, there are some things you're going to have to pay for twice, such as restrooms and toilets. But there are other things that you're going to be able to save money on. We're thinking if you did uh, smaller structures at this juncture, that they could be more of a residential type of construction, which we know what we can do that type of construction for. We also know that the theater is going to have to be a specific type of construction, and we also know the exhibition hall has to be another type of construction. And so when you begin to pull them apart, it allows opportunity for maybe these smaller buildings can be built by local trades and just have some of the larger commercial aspects built by a contractor out of the city. So That so, has more experience doing that. Correct. With bigger buildings. So you're envisioning maybe those two smaller ones more chamber offices? Or one, why don't you say that, like, the, what you've got right. written on there so they can... Here I have it written, the coffee house. Whenever I go to the theater, I always want cheesecake and coffee and so... But I know we've talked about, you know, potentially having some type of small retail that will draw people, either a deli or something like that. We do need to, and you probably already know this, but we need to be very careful in the revitalization of downtown and not to Detroit. try and yeah. plan something that could develop right. on the square. And mm -hmm. I think that's going to be going to hit us. Mm -hmm. If we plan for something, it's going to hit us mm -hmm. for, you know, a separate building. Mm -hmm. I, I know that we're going to catch flack already. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, it, because just, it's a separate building or because it's a retail space? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Okay. Don't you think, Kim? Do you think people are going to say we need to develop these little shops, coffee shops, houses around the square? Yeah. Isn't that? That probably will come up. <clears throat> but who's to say that there can't be two coffee houses? Yeah. Or if it's, right. let's say if it's like a catering. You know, a, a, a something that is normally a catering uh, a kitchen or, or like a refreshments bar or something like that that isn't mm -hmm. isn't going to every day detract, but be in the same from the square, but be in the same facility. So during intermission, people can come out into the lobby and whatever you know. And yeah, so, I think being being a part of the building would be more positive. But if we Mm -hmm. If we say we're going to do that, they're going to go, well, you don't need that. We want to develop the square. I can mm -hmm. right. It's good enough. And that's a valid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's valid. So Where we Marcus office space for the time being until the square gets filled in for the coffee house. Sure. There you go. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's like saying that the town of Fairfield can only have one restaurant at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Were we thinking the Chamber of Commerce would be in this new complex? Mm -hmm. It definitely yes. is going to be in the complex. Yes. Okay. So having that there. So it's here. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and mention that those are one and a half story buildings. Right. We were thinking that this would not be a single story. It would be one and a half or two story buildings. So we had talked about potentially having some lease space for workshops or um, dance studios, things of that nature. That's where I'm thinking those would go. Right. And then over here, you would have some offices and some support space and things of that nature. I do have a question on it. Uh-huh. You like coffee and cheesecake at intermission. Now, you leave the theater right. in December right. to go to the coffee house. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. or to... I would there. like it connected. I would like it to, yeah, I think so. Well, that's because kind of, of, that's kind of, of where weather. we are in, in the development of the design. Yeah. It's just, you know, we're kind of throwing I like literally the way bubbles it looks out on that the square. Yeah. 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 I like this idea of yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, but practically, it doesn't work, in, you know, especially if we're having a wedding reception in here, you know, to bring all the food from here to here. And so those could end up being more like corridors as opposed to 
external passages, like corridors mm -hmm. that, yeah, are, exactly. that are exactly like glass right. or something like your original yeah. original. Right. And they don't yeah, have to be completely that. separate like buildings. The silo. And thing. also, yeah. you know, the chamber. If they're helping to manage and run this place, mm -hmm. they're going to want convenience and getting to the other places. Right. Too. And the office too. Right. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind really breaking the buildings out was more so that it could be delineated in the construction type. But we can still, because if, if everything is built with the same construction type as the theater, like picture the Des Moines Civic Center, you know, it's, one, it's a big massive building. And if they broke out, you know, other, the things that don't need to be made of that uh, construction type, it doesn't cost $250 a square foot. It yeah. ends up costing, you know, 100 or 80. And so, but we still may be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But keep the building all, you know, within the same climate Still control. together. Right. So sure. we're going to be, as a board, going to be able to take this and like rip it apart, and you know, in your mind. Yeah, absolutely. Not yep. that, not that. And that's, that's why we're presenting these we're first things. To I do, no, right? no, no, no. This is half the fun of it. No, it no. doesn't. Okay. No, it doesn't okay. offend me. Okay. This okay. is Good. like. Good. <laughs> but keep in mind that, that this is this is only the second out of three that we have tonight, and, so and three out of nine that, that we've got, and. You know, we were doing this too, just tearing right, everything yeah. up. Okay. And so, absolutely do it. I do yeah. that with my house and my husband, and it drives me nuts, because every time we fight, <laughs> I, can't, I can't handle it. <laughs> okay, now the third one, we tried to take a little bit further and be a little more crazy with. Oh. So what we want to do with this is everything has been very rectilinear and everything looks like a box and that's part of the difficulty with this first part of kind of massing and trying to allocate space and relationship and circulation is you tend to say that's what the building's going to look like now put brick on it and let's go home and we're not going to allow that to happen uh, last summer, I think we came up with a real fun dynamic center that had some uh, shape to it and some motion associated with it. So the next option, we um, focused less on building and more on people. We tried to highlight um, circulation paths and create more corridors and things of that nature to make it just a little more exciting. And so. Part of the reason we tried to connect these access points and created a corridor across the site here. Uh, we tried to play off of the space between buildings and alleys and bring people through that way to create more access to the buildings. Um, in this scenario, we put the theater at the southeast corner and then we actually put the exhibition space at the north so that. Um, you're more equal in, in massing and creating some more dynamic spaces somewhat in the middle of the center. And having your commerce and offices in a smaller facility connected with these. And so. Now, when you're doing this, are you thinking that window at bar height is really big? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Not at all. Not at all. This is, from this, we're trying to determine where is going to be the best place for the theater on the site for um, visibility, for accessibility, for uh, loading and unloading, for tying it to support spaces, for um, all of those aspects and so it's a lot more abstract and um, not as rigid as what we're really showing. So it. how are you going to come to a conclusion on what we want with this as far as laying it out? Well we'll get some feedback from you tonight as you've been doing and from other people who I'm sure from the video will email us but um, what we will do is with these schemes, all of the consultants have gone back and they're doodling and thinking about how am I going to get food back and forth from the theater to the coffee shop? How am I going to get a semi parked and loaded into the theater but not have children close to it? 
how am I going to get people walking from the square coming up but not getting run over by dropping somebody off? And so they're going to be going through all those things and we'll probably come back in three weeks with um, two site plans and two approaches that we feel will serve this facility the best. And what if we don't like them? We change them. We develop them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's what this process is about, sort of like last summer. Should you get a better idea of what we really feel as far as the massing before you progress? Next time when we come, it will be just a little more massing, but we're actually going to try and define some spaces a little more closely. So, you know, this is a closer indication of theater, support, lobby, that type of thing. And when you're doing this, you're going through all the programming and the recommendations. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And these are, we have, we have basic ideas of what needs to be in the building that we're applying to these. But you're you're not yeah, seeing scene. like 95 percent right. yeah. of what we're what what will be there, and it w it won't necessarily be this footprint either. This is just sort of a bare basics, you know, 101 design of what needs to happen on this site, where we start basically. And so this is sort of walking you through our bubble diagrams of well, what you know, this kind of thing, you know, what goes here and there, and so um, as we develop it, we'll show it to you. And, and I guess your feedback. I don't want to dampen your creativity, but I think also we all have maybe a preconceived vision of what we're thinking about, and maybe I'm each sure. board member should relate that to you and see how far apart we are. I mean, mm -hmm. am I the only one that thinks I think it should all be hooked together? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think we're it fine. Just about has to be with our with our weather. It with might. Our weather. No, no, no. We, no we all agree. Okay. With for sure. And I'm thinking not, and I think you agree, not ultra-modern because of the site mm -hmm. right. and right. the surrounding area, mm -hmm. right. where to me this looks like it could go ultra-modern. If we built the walls this way, though. See, because these, <laughs> see what I mean? It, it could, but... It would have to, I suppose. Right. Yeah, yeah there's, there's so much, so much potential. <clears throat> it just could go, just with this little drawing, it could go so many different directions, design-wise. You know, and that's where you're the architects and you know where you're going. Right. Yeah. And we don't understand that. But I think it'll, what's it'll important, come. what came out from this meeting, is everything does need to be contained within a climate controlled environment. Right. Throughout. You, you're, well, not, you're not going to enjoy walking through the park and just have five different buildings. The, the, like, you're looking at five different heating systems. The function, the system, everything. The right. function right. of the people that are involved, we have so many people that are involved with the art association, with the theater, with the this, with the that, and mm -hmm. they're going to be moving from one to the other right. constantly. Mm -hmm. The same people involved in the mm -hmm. same, I just see it being more connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we didn't come tonight to go that far, but it's, it's very good that it is that far mm -hmm. because yeah. With this information, we're mm -hmm. going to get back to that. Mm -hmm. so. so, board members, if you're out there, email <laughs> what your feelings are on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well, that it's we important. Can eliminate wasted energy. I think. Or, or mm -hmm. any, any. When we say massing, because all you're looking at here are just essentially a bunch of blocks of where the buildings are. Any ideas about the massing? Any ideas about its relationship to whatever's there, or mm -hmm. what the materials might like to be? Because you're right. right everyone has an idea. And you know, it's it's not our job to change the ideas. It's 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 our job to sort of pull them into the project and design the building for you. Right. So we want to hear it. Well, when you got the architecture of the courthouse <coughs> across the street and Booth and Church on the other side, and you put this in the middle of it, it stand out like sore thumb. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't don't misunderstand right. me. I'm not I'm not playing it down a lot. I like the idea. I don't think it fits. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood. All right. Mm -hmm. You know, it really breaks down to just being an idea. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. And I can see where that could develop even to the outside, looking like it belongs. Right. But I'm thinking function-wise, mm -hmm. that probably hook together is more what I was thinking. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. not the rest of them. No, that's fine. Um, that's why we're 
here. Are we talking basement? I know that's been thrown around a lot. Yeah, I, I think so. As much as possible. Because mm -hmm. I keep thinking we really, really want to make sure we have a space, space, a rehearsal space. And storage space. Rehearsal, storage, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the space. size of the stage somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, not, you know, the, where we don't have to rent it out to, you know, where it's bit like the workshop or something. Right. Right. And I think a lot of support is going to come from revitalization. I mean, that's what made us change our location mm -hmm. this time, mm -hmm. and right. that they're going to want things to pop up around the square that can be mm -hmm. supported by the attendance of mm -hmm. these events. I mean, already we've got revelations mm -hmm. right there, and we've got um, off-Broadway. Right, and mm -hmm. even going over to the Women's Club and having a pre- Reception, mm -hmm. a small mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, good. So uh, this is more than I thought I would get tonight, <laughs> but it's great. It, <laughs> it, just it is. Three of us. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we can still have climate control. You know, that's what they do at Washington Theater. They have, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's one like your first one, right? Mm -hmm. And you can still control. Temperature zones, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And we yeah, are that in houses. Yeah. pretty yeah. much yeah. thinking parking in that area where the house is behind the house. Well, I it's very clever what you've done. You can there. see that we haven't we haven't touched it. Yeah. This right. is, hasn't been touched. But back here, this is it worked the best on almost any scheme that we designed to put parking there. I think, I think it works great, especially along second. You tend to have your highest speed. Traffic. Uh, vehicle traffic. Yeah. It's better to pull the, pull the pedestrian, you know, the, the soft, here. yeah, the soft traffic into the, the corridor between the courthouse and the Civic Center along Main Street. I think that would be great to develop if we can close that street and, and get a really we have, feeling coming through there. We mm -hmm. have some ideas about that. If it's not going to be closed, it may feel that way. And mm -hmm. so it's that's in development. Right. We'll get there. I mean, people, I like might, people might not like this idea of parking here and then walking all the way around the building to get in there. But and that's what we've been struggling. That's why we started to but, break it apart mm -hmm. because then you're not parking and walking in the back door. Because mm -hmm. right. there's there's a lot of formality about going to the theater mm -hmm. and excitement right. about and being seen right. right at the front. And then can't you open both sides so people can park wherever they want? You can go in from the east or go in from the west. Okay. Yeah, but look at here, the, you know, well, it's just that this is the formal entrance. The back entrance is Everybody really wants to go formal. in there. Everybody wants to walk in from these yeah. and walk in from these. Yeah. Yeah. All right, or the, the 28 spaces with 48. Two different, different experiences, one building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, even though it's just diagrammatically a little different, I like uh, the, the street there. The only difference really between this, well, let me back up here. This can come back together and this can just be the circulation expression. And the, the, the major differences are the actual location of the theater. This one is located here with our exhibition along that street. And then in this scheme, you have the theater here with the exhibition here, but you still have your support along the uh, north side. Now, one thing I'd like to ask of the, the board is, is I've heard this opinion a few times, and I've and I've agreed with it, but um, you know I want to hear all the we want to look at all the options is to uh, put the convention space on the north side of the lot versus anywhere else. Um, now the reason that we sort of broke out of that was so that, you know, a big, you know, demanding uh, box that it's going to be will, it, it's not very, it's not very friendly to the houses that are right across the street. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, it's, they, they would sort of, there would be sort of tension there, I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, and so we sort of moved it around a little bit. It doesn't make a lot of sense because it creates just that much more distance and that much more building between the theater and the train tracks. But in the direction that we're going with the uh, acoustical engineers, it, it doesn't seem like that will make a difference. And so I'd like to get everyone's opinion, an email or now or whenever, about that. Whether we should put exhibition here or not. Right. 
I haven't. Because if exhibition went here, then your support would be in between the two. That's similar how to how I have it before. That's how I've envisioned it. No. But I can see what you mean about the friendliness for the houses across the street. The one issue about the houses across the street is something we've touched on a little bit. Um, I don't know how much we want to talk about that, but it's, you know, the future plans for that block is something to consider with mm -hmm. what we're going to be putting on the north side of our block. Right. right. One thing to keep in mind, if you have never unloaded a truck in the wintertime, when the wind is blowing out of the northwest at 40 mile an hour, right. and the snow is already up to your knees, if you put a door on the north, I'm not going to like you very well. <laughs> That's true. So this no. is north. Here, he's talking about this, right. you know. Right, down yeah, this way. Yeah, this corridor, and it's, it's, yeah, he's it, right, it's it terrible. It does make sense, though, to have the loading dock so that the semi can back up into this parking right, lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like we did over on this one. Mm -hmm. You know, so that they can unload into here. Right. So, I mean, otherwise a pickup's going to, I mean, a semi would have to be out on Briggs Avenue or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of like the... traveled, busy street um, rather than the one by the courthouse. Okay. Right. Main, main, main street. Main, main is more too. a quieter... Um, right. Right, but we can't have a loading dock back there because the entrances right. are going to come on the north. Saying. So oh. I'm saying it either needs to be on the west but we want to avoid the, the situation that happens at everybody's, right? It's the trucks at the back, you know, oh. the trucks back up at everybody's. It's oh. not quite enough room there. Oh. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, you'll see, it's, mm -hmm. it's... How about Caddy Corner? <laughs> Caddy Corner? You'd lose a lot of space. Yeah. Well, if, the house, <laughs> like this. if the house is gone... Yeah, if the house is gone... It takes care of it, because you've got a parking lot to put the truck in. Right. Mm -hmm. Even but if we'll, you didn't, you still got a parking lot to put the truck in. Right, right. We'll design around it for now, the house. Right. Yeah, if I mean, if you did it this way, there there is no loading dock area for the I know. for the auditorium. I know. Do you need a loading dock area? You do. Oh yeah, yeah. for flats. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. If you've got a loading dock in the exhibition hall, why couldn't it be unloaded into that and and taken into the theater? Yeah, that, well, yeah, we could do. We could absolutely though. do that. I mean, it's just a matter of of having a, a space back here that's that could be divided or allocated for just in case the the civic the um, the exhibition hall is being used right. or something like that. But right, right. yeah, it's those kind of things. I mean, you only pay for one door then. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'm even thinking lobby when you hang artwork and get large pieces that mm -hmm. you want to load somewhere. Right. I just hung a show in Burlington and it's in an old church and you, you either had to zigzag down a handicap ramp, probably 20 zigs and zags, oh, okay. or walk straight up a hill from like Snake Alley. Really? Wow. And that is a real oh. um, wow. bad deal for artists. Yeah, wow. I would think that it okay. limits what they can exhibit. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, this is great. I mean, it's, it's fun to see all the different possibilities. Okay, when we see the next six? <laughs> <laughs> the next six. <laughs> <laughs> When's that going to be? Three weeks? So, Less is there three. anything else you need from the board? I think you just board? give feedback. I think our three areas are theater, exhibition, and kind of the support space and how those relate and where you would see those on the site. We'd like to hear the board's ideas because mm -hmm. everybody I'm sure has a picture yeah. of kind of what it's going to be. I know I did, Mark did, you know, when we get together and it's funny, it's, it's a, it's, you don't think so, but it's very different. So, mm -hmm. and we have nine or ten other ideas about what this might be and so um, right. it'd be nice to hear them. Absolutely. Instead of, uh, as you and boxes, could there be some curvatures added here and there, like in the corner and a bubble in the front, like for the theater and stuff mm -hmm. like that, to get away from that boxy effect? I well, think that you? will come next, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Ken. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Mark was telling me that he was showing me where some of the bubbles might, or the curves might be earlier on. It's just that 
It was, yeah. There's the old, there's the yeah, old curve. Here's mm -hmm. the curve here. It's just that in this phase, you know, it's, it's more of an area study than mm -hmm. anything. Right, right. And the other thing is between the two, between the coffee shop and the chamber office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might want their own coffee mm -hmm. shop. Here and here? Much? No, <laughs> here and there. Oh, well, how much space is there in that walkway in the middle there? I think it's like 30 feet or so. It's about 30 feet. Yes. And it's roughly how long? 100 feet. This distance? Mm -hmm. I think it's 60, 75. So you've got 1,800 square feet of grass versus retail space of some kind. Or, or potential Just space to rent it out or something. So the suggestion is to fill, well, fill it up. I, I, mm -hmm. I, and I'm just yeah. thinking out loud, I guess. I, mm -hmm. It's if, good. If we have the potential to generate some income mm -hmm. through it and be landlords, mm -hmm. I think we need to take every opportunity to keep to mm -hmm. make sure that we've got enough income to keep the thing going. Mm -hmm. I think in our last plans, too, I know that you had to create them in a real hurry without any input from us at the last. Mm -hmm. But there were some surprises for us, and I know one for me was a lack of a work studio space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, for me, that's going to be important. Um, was that in the basement? We never really found it, discovered it. Right. So I think maybe yeah, okay, we need to go over and re-identify exactly what it is we're getting uh, okay. as far as theater. We can produce that. Chamber yeah. space, uh -huh. office space, office space, right. dressing room. Dressing room. We need to identify so that we don't all of a sudden go, oh, whoa, what happened to the art room space and okay. the gallery right. in the foyer or the coffee shop or the whatever. I think we do need to re-identify. Mm -hmm. that that's sort of part of the next step that we're going to do is to pull all of the program, all of the okay. building use okay. issues out and, and note everything, trying to make it all work. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we can actually supply that you know, and mm -hmm. to the board and say, this is this is where we're at. Right. And so we can do that. Another question, I'm sure probably is going to come up. We talked about basements, and I, I think that's probably one of the cheapest spaces you're ever going to come up with. I'd mm -hmm. like to see it under the offices and everything. OK. For, even for additional mm -hmm. retail space. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we do that, now it's no longer going to be accessible. Uh -huh. Without you talking the elevator? elevator. I don't know what, what it would take to put a full basement under that and a full basement underneath the theater so we have plenty of room to do everything that we need to do. Okay. And also have additional space and see what the cost of an elevator would be. Okay. Possible. Mm -hmm. Dealing with elderly parents now in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. I can't believe how much, how many times I see people with walkers and wheelchairs, and mm -hmm. I think it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I like you could have um, the back entrance be a, the handicap ramp or something like that if if there are steps up to the front, mm -hmm. then that would be an easy way for people to come in from the parking lot. Um, and I know you have to consider that anyway. Right. But if there is a basement or something that... I don't know the I'm sure there be some kind of a prize because you're not going to build a ground level. That's why you have water run in the thing. <laughs> no. So, right. Uh, right. But I, I would assume that there would be some ramp of some kind to go into the building anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than a step up. Yeah, and you would need some type of accessible entry at the front, and you'd want it at yeah, the back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It could be barely noticeable, but it depends on the design. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally it's mm -hmm. almost not even noticeable. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, or a gradual slope yeah. as you go up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or 20 switchbacks, which is pretty noticeable, but it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you cart all your stuff on there, and you turn, and you turn, and and it was 100 degrees, and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh Snake Alley. It's, it's uh, hooked on, this place is hooked on to Snake Alley. The church? The church. At the top of the hill? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're supposed to drive up there and park in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I think that's all we have for tonight. Well, this is all right. So I'm going to so, turn the camera <laughs> off and board members uh, start your emails. Well, think yeah. about think about how um, in the in the next step, what we're going to be do is what we're going to be doing is pulling the program, you know, out and, and supplying it to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now is a good time to uh, highlight anything mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to say, oh, wait a minute, oh, I really do want that, or, mm -hmm. you know, I missed this last time, you know, so that there aren't any surprises mm -hmm. or anything like that. But okay. you'll, get, you'll get the program we're working from, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe everything will be in there. Yeah. Well, I think it's well, great. Thank you. I mean, I think this was fabulous, yeah. and job, all the drawings and all the fun. photographs. Just, just wait, just wait. <laughs> thank you. Got more coming. Good. Yes, right. more coming. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.